but it shook us up and then we forgot it. This is the kind of thing that you sort of brush out of your awareness. Some scientists have thought deeply about this, going back to the Middle Ages. Fascist Carden, in uh, the 15th century, writes in his diary that he had performed some, uh, some rites to make the elementals of the air appear in his laboratory. This was a very fashionable thing to do in the 15th century, and these uh, creatures appeared before him. There were seven sylphs, the creatures of the air. Two of them were the chiefs, and they came forward, and he asked them what they knew about the nature of the universe. It turned out the two sylphs disagreed. One of them said, well, God created the universe once and for all, and here we are. The other one said, no, God created the universe from moment to moment, and if he should stop for a minute, everything would disappear. So this clicker is not the clicker that I was given earlier. It's another occasion, another instance of the same clicker. But these clickers are being generated by something in a higher plane, which as a, as a software engineer, I understand perfectly. This makes sense. It makes no sense in terms of the physics of energy. It makes perfect sense in the physics of information. And here you have the two models of the world. You have the classic physical model and you have quantum mechanics. A number of people have more recently been looking for the little sister of physics, starting with Wolfgang Pauli, one of the founders of quantum mechanics, Carl Jung, and there is extensive correspondence between Pauli and Jung, Paul Kammerer, Arthur Kersler, David Bohm, Max Vermans, Philippe Guimont in France, Landauer and Seth Lloyd and many others. Carl Jung um, argued with Pauli and Carl Jung compiled a, um, a catalog of coincidences that had happened to him. In one case he was at a conference in, in another city and in the middle of the night he woke up with the feeling there was some, somebody in the room and he actually got up and checked and there was nobody in, in the vicinity. But he had the feeling of something hitting his forehead and something hitting the back of his head. He went back to sleep and the next day got a telegram that one of his patients had committed suicide by shooting himself in the forehead and the bullet had lodged itself in the back of the head. Uh, Carl Jung in his books mentions a number of these, of these uh, remarkable coincidences. I had uh, another occasion like this, uh, in the 70s I was concerned about the number of, of uh, cults growing up in California but also in France and, and, and elsewhere around the idea of extraterrestrials. And uh, some of these uh, groups call themselves, themselves the Melchizedek cult or they, they, you know, they used as inspiration the figure, the biblical figure of Melchizedek. This is a representation of Melchizedek at Chartres uh, Cathedral, which is very beautiful. Melchizedek is a very uh, interesting, very mystical, very um, mysterious figure in, in the Bible. Uh, he's a very powerful figure because he initiated Abraham and uh, actually was the origin of all three religions of the book, the Islamist, the Jewish, and the Christian religion. Um, I was going to an interview in Los Angeles, took a taxi at random from the flow of traffic, got to my interview. When I got home, I looked at the receipt from the driver, and the receipt was signed Melchizedek. Now that, that got me in, in a strange, on, on a strange series of, of, of thoughts. At the time, there was research going on at Stanford Research Institute on parapsychology. I was part of that program, uh, the program of remote viewing. Yuri Geller was there. Yuri Geller thought that he could communicate with extraterrestrials on, on board a platform called Hoover, and that uh, he was getting communications from them, which enabled him to do the, uh, the, the, what he was performing in, the, in our laboratory. I thought, well, this seems to be the same kind of communication. Something is communicating with me. And over the, uh, the next several weeks, I did a number of experiments, and I convinced myself that these coincidences 
Some of them mean something powerful, as Jung said. Others mean absolutely nothing. It's just the way the world is organized. So let's, back, let's go back and do a little bit of software thinking. If you have a small library, this is the, the Library of Congress, uh, 33 million books. 33 million books is nothing. I mean, that's what Facebook does in, in one afternoon. Uh, today, Google is getting 35 hours of video per minute uploaded to the Google, to the YouTube uh, site. So if you have a small library, you can still work with coordinates. You have shelves and you have vertical stacks, and so you have X, Y, and Z, and that works fine. If somebody sends you 10,000 books, you can push the existing books a little to insert the new books. If you have enough staff people at your disposal, it works fine. If you have a modern library which looks like this, this is Google, this is Facebook, this is Twitter, you can't do that anymore. You can't use dimensions. You sprinkle the information that comes in statistically in virtual memory, in an infinite virtual memory, and then you have a, a, a hashing code that enables you to get it back when somebody asks a question of Google. And the result is statistical. Some of it means something, some of it means nothing. Uh, this is now starting to be mainstream physics. Um, Dr. Guillemot in France is a CNRS uh, physicist, and in his latest book, La Route du Temps, The Road of Time, he argues that synchronicities are caused by a double causality. Our intentions cause effects in the future that become the future causes of present effects. Again, this is now becoming mainstream physics. To, to conclude, there are four requirements for the new physics of 2061. First, we should recognize the universe as a subsystem of a meta-reality of information structures. It's all information structure, and it's all simultaneous. I don't mean it's a database. I mean, I, I don't mean to use an analogs with, with current crude technology. It's something obviously much bigger, much more complex, but you get the idea. We should recognize dimensions as a cultural artifact. We create dimensions because we have small libraries and we need X, Y, and Z, but we don't need them in physics. So we should do away with the concept of dimensions in the physics of the future. The present is overdetermined, as Guillemot says, it's determined from the past and it's determined from the future. And finally, consciousness is generating the impression of space and time. That's what space-time is. It's consciousness traversing associations in this world of information and creating the illusion of space and time. So my proposal to you is that we let physicists continue with the physics of energy. They do that very well. They will eventually have a way of reconciling relativity with quantum mechanics. Let's go on and look for the missing sister. Thank you very much.